In this video, I am going to talk about architectural planters and the possibility of keeping the soil level as low as possible to reduce damage. And hopefully you'll understand more about that by the end of the video. So here we have a planter wall. The soil level is low, but we still have the damage here. Um, keep in mind that the soil gets wet and absorbs into porous materials. The porous materials are artificial rock, anything made out of a cement based product kind of a thing, um, cement, sand, mortar, the mortar that's in between the rocks, brick, block, and of course stucco. Here we have a cement wall or a, this would be a monolithic poured solid concrete structure with moisture absorbing out of the soil into it and uh, creating problems for the paint. And you can actually see this is either a crack or an area where it's been repaired. Not uncommon to see someone come in and repair something like this. And then when a few, within a few years, you, en you end up with the same problem because they're not doing anything about keeping the moisture out of the soil or they cannot do anything about keeping the moisture out of the soil. Uh, keep in mind also that um, concrete with metal in it rusts. This would include all of the rebar if you have a raised level. And again, if, if this same effect here could be, uh, you know, obtained by lowering the soil or redirecting some of the runoff, then the more water you can keep away from these structures, the better off you're going to be. And that's kind of what I'm trying to hammer home in here in this video. Here's a soil level that's a little lower. And you've got the same effect here. It, the plants grow out of the ground and they're going to grow up. So if this soil level was uh, two foot lower, um, you could actually have the same effect here with this plant, you know, as if it would be if it was um, almost to the top of the planter here. Um, smaller planter here with a hedge. And again, the soil level is low. If the soil level would have been raised, you could actually have the same problem. Um, if, I'm, I'm guessing this is colored concrete here. This is not painted. And, uh, but it doesn't mean you can't end up, if you raise the soil level, you can end up with problems in the concrete. Water over time can create problems for concrete structures. Here's something that has a lot of water in it and uh, looks like they use some type of bricks and or blocks and you can see where the water's coming through over time this is going to um, weaken the structure or, or it could it could actually come apart so the concrete or the mortar that's in between the blocks could or i should say will weaken before the blocks actually come apart but i've seen water like i said cannot uh, say this enough i've seen water uh, practically disintegrate um, products made out of cement and sand um, blocks you know not not a brick really but the blocks or the mortar just tears the mortar up so this would be another thought you're going to need to keep in mind is what products you're actually going to use when you do build your planner is it going to be a four inch block or an eight inch block is it going to be solid concrete or brick, but uh, you need to take some consideration into that. Um, the materials and the use of them, the planter over time, definitely need to be considered. Here's two concrete planters. One of them is uh, goes all the way into the ground. One of them has a concrete floor. This one here is also up against the building. This one is away from the building. This would be the ideal situation. This one right here, the only thing you're going to have to worry about is the concrete disintegrating over time or the mortar or the blocks, whatever, whatever it is. Over here, you're going to need to worry about the moisture from the ground that gets absorbed into the concrete footing and then, of course, into the wood framing. Now, if it is waterproofed, you know, and I know a lot of people, hey, why not just waterproof it? That's fine. Great. Uh, Keep in mind, my job was to go fix all of this stuff um, when it uh, was damaged. I got to see all this stuff firsthand. People waterproofing. Hey, this waterproofing uh, material has a 100-year warranty, and then the company goes out of business. I've seen this too many times. 
You know, all you need is a small hole over here. Um, and this small hole can allow water or moisture to seep into the concrete. It can pull it into the foundation and it's not going to do you any good. So, uh, uh, and, and again, the reason why I'm making the video is to just maybe suggest lowering the level of the soil or the fill material so that you can um, reduce the amount of moisture, if anything, if you really want the planters. Um, you're going to need a drain hole if you have a concrete floor or something that is um, water isn't going to seep through as easy. You do not want it to pool up in there because that's going to create even more problems and allow more moisture faster to go into the concrete. So drainage is essential on anything that you seal with um, concrete or other materials on the bottom. Something else you could do would be to provide some additional materials to um, create some additional mass, let's say, to make the moisture a little tougher to get through. You know, if you had a 12 inch thick concrete wall here, you're probably never going to have any problem with the foundation here. Be a, a lot, take a lot of moisture to, to absorb through this to get to this. So just kind of thought I would throw that out there. Some additional mass might provide you with. Uh, an, uh, an, another idea. But uh, don't waterproof both sides. Don't waterproof the wall uh, up against the foundation and the planter because this would allow moisture to get trapped in between the waterproofed areas. So that wouldn't be a good thing. Another thing you can do is keep the planter away from the foundation, maybe an inch away. But, uh, you know, I don't know how far away you can go. You wouldn't want to have it um, let's say between three inches and six inches because you could have, um, they have problems with babies or young children getting their heads stuck in these areas, their building code issues. So I would say if you're going to move it away, maybe an inch to two inches or go um, maybe eight, eight inches to uh, or further kind of a thing. But, uh, you know, keep in mind that these areas might need to be cleaned out and one inch or two inches might not provide you with that. If you do put a, you know, if you do end up with a, a two inch spot, uh, make sure you have some type of a, you know, maybe a vacuum or something with a hose that you can get in there and clean that stuff out whenever the debris builds up. You don't want the debris to build up because once you have debris in here, now you have an avenue for the moisture to absorb through the planter into the concrete foundation. Here's a good idea of what I'm talking about. Uh, higher soil level, you know, might raise this particular plant up a little bit, but why not put a lower soil level and then let the plant grow up to that same height and, uh, you know, reduce the amount of moisture that can get absorbed into the, into the foundation. Again, I've said that enough in this video. I know it, but this is a big problem. People want planters. They want to fill them up with soil and uh, this stuff absorbs into the foundations a little faster. So lower them, lower them if you can and uh, lower them as much as you possibly can. I mean, if you can plant this in at ground level, you are going to be doing a lot better. So, uh, but again, you can fill them up with a little bit. Um, this could actually be a safety hazard. You might need to put some type of a barrier in there. If an animal or someone falls into there, they might not be able to get out. That could be a problem we don't want. You know, you uh, come up, you come to clean your planter up one day and you see the skeleton of an animal in there. Ah, that might not be good. So a barrier like this might work. Another thing would be to put a concrete floor in it and just put some potted plants on top of it. Of course, this would need a drainage system, some type of a drain in the floor. But this right here would uh, reduce your chances of problems drastically. So... If you are going to use uh, architectural planters, uh, make sure you give some of the suggestions in here that I provided you with some thought. Lower the soil level if possible. Use barriers, potted plants. And of course, um, don't get sold on a waterproofing system that, that will never fail. I have never came across that. Um, and uh, if you really believe that there is a waterproofing system that won't fail, then I got some swamp land in Arizona. I might uh, I think you might be interested in also. So uh, 
that is that for the video. And of course, that was just a joke. Do not contact me about any property. And I hope this helps. If it does, don't forget to uh, hit the old thumbs up button.